All right, I think we're good to go. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so um, taking a look at this TCG showdown. It's been a long time since I've played any events, so this seemed like fun. Um, if anybody has any interest in joining in it, there is a referral code, and uh, I think we can get you that. I'll have to talk to the guy who turned me on to this and see how open it is, but I, I was pretty sure it's open to the public. Um, anyway, it's a standard tournament this weekend. Uh, looks like it'll be historic the following, explorer after that, and then recycling. Um, but for the time being, we're looking at standard, and I realized that I haven't really looked at what is actually being done in standard yet. I've just kind of looked at standard and looked at what I wanted to do and then played some limited. So um, I'm going to take a look at the actual decks now and uh, we'll see what everybody else is playing. And we've got Aether Hub pulled up. Um, normally I used Untap GG, but as I pay for their premium service, I didn't want to show off their premium data without their permission. So that's why we're doing it this way instead. Um, Aether Hub is great, it's free, but if you want to take it any a little bit further into like actual tracked data from players, Untapped is great for that. Um, but right now it looks like the majority of players across the board are playing Esper Legends, and I feel like there's some pretty solid reasoning. I mean, just looking at this list, it's it's kind of gross. Shoulder just wins games, <coughs> wins games right now. Completely takes aggro out of the meta, almost entirely. Um, the fact that this deck has such a high play rate means running aggressive into any sort of event right now is just not gonna work very well, unless you can reliably keep Shoulder off the board. Which is where things like Mono Blue Tempo and uh, those kinds of decks seem to excel. Um, after that, we've got a Grixis. It looked like a mid range at first glance. Yeah, still looking pretty mid range. That that seems to be what Wizards is pushing right now. Um, it comes and goes. I'm not particularly partial to it but I'm a combo player, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, that being said, this does look pretty decent. It has a lot of interaction potential. There's a lot of grave removal, though. Which makes me nervous because I was looking at running Goyf. But I don't know if that's going to be doable if everybody's targeting Graveyard. Yep, mm -mm, not happening. This still looks way too strong. Meat Hook did not fix Mono Black. <laughs> this looks evil. And I really don't know how to fight this. Got a Rakdos mid range. Okay, pretty similar to the Grixis list. Just a little easier to pull off in the mana base. And yep, I kind of figured Mono Blue Tempo is definitely hitting the charts. Hotty Jin is just crazy strong. Jund looks like. Shouldered kind of mid range, getting the combo potential out of Rakdos, but 
a little more value with the Unleash into the Inferno in the removal. Eh, I mean it looks fun, but this doesn't look very consistent to me. The idea of popping off on the Fables and then copying Trespasser a bunch of times seems nice. Same with the Blood Tithe Harvester, but it's also very gimmicky. I mean, again, you, if you land Shouldred, you win. For the most part, you can stabilize against anything with it, but for the rest of the deck seemed a little far-fetched. Wow. This is angry looking. I built something pretty similar to this last season. Odd to see. Oh, this isn't a traditional deck. There is no sideboard on the list, at least. But the main board... Wow, how many one-drops is that? Four Phoenix Chicks, four Epicures, four Play With Fire, four Kumano, and a Shivan Devastator. That's 17 one-drops. comes close to mono black vamps from old dominaria not bad I kind of like this I know I said aggro is kind of off the table but if you're dropping a raiju on turn 4 they might not have time to play the shouldered Raiju is haste, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that could do it. Gruel. Another super aggressive deck. Surprised to not see the Fauna Shaman. Oh, but I see. No need for it. Mm. No, I think this just isn't using Brothers War cards. At all. What's this? Nope. Okay, well, uh, I guess this hasn't updated yet. That's rough. Uh, let's see what MTG Goldfish has. This is just one deck. Here we go. Artifact control soldiers. Soldiers I have seen a lot about. It looks pretty decent. Demir Tempo, same. Esper Legends. This is the top deck right now from everything I'm seeing. There it is, okay. So they're using 
underdog endemic is underdog soldier? no, Tali is so is Denik okay, whenever you attack with five or more soldiers creatures you control get plus one plus one and flying brutal cathar is soldier Loran is draw an artifact removal Adeline is just Adeline Rafine is just Rafine Muriel during your turn your opponents can't cast spells or activated abilities of okay so everything is sorcery speed when it attacks make X soldiers where X is the soldiers you control <laughs> holy crap uh... okay rabble rousing without rabble rousing or tie shoulder recommissions new Graveyard to the battlefield. And a counter on it. That's not bad. Hmm. Okay. Um. Oh. This deck looked crazy fast. This is not it. That's not what I meant to click on. Prowess, thank you. Yeah, the Monastery Swift Spear. I actually ran into this yesterday. I've only played like two games since New Standard and I ran into this. It's super funny. I, I actually can't complain about how fast he killed me. Very, very fun looking. Ideally, you can crank out like a turn four win with this. Same with that gruel, uh, or mono red raijus. Jeskai soldiers. I don't think we'll see much of that. John Reanimator, I've seen a little bit about. Prowler, Fauna Shaman, Blood Tithe, Wind Grace, War Chief, Flesh Gorger, Titan of Industry. Nothing horribly surprising. Awkward Curve, 11 Mythics. I think we'll see less of this specifically because of that. And a lot of it's new. What are you? I like the loyalty counter. I feel like this could be tweaked pretty heavily. But this seems solid. Oh, for the self mill and the cast. I think I'm gonna pop that out because I I like this. Urza domain control. This one looked crazy. I saw a clip of somebody playing this and they just had their opponent on lockdown. Urza 
Urza Protector, and Might Stone, Weak Stone. The moment you flip into Big Urza, the game ends. There's just nothing that can be done about it. And between Late Light and Binding and Drag to the Bottom, the control basis seems pretty strong for it. And new card wise, you only need the Urzas and the Mightstone Weakstone, which a lot of us got in uh, the pre order. So it seems fairly doable in general. Uh, it does need the 40 rares, but 8 mythics and. How many of them are even new? Urza. Tefri. That's it. Everything else you might have had from the past sets. So this feels like we're going to see a lot of it. It also feels really strong right now. I'm, I'm feeling like one of these are how I'm going to go given how many aggro decks I'm seeing. And with mid-range being the meta, I'm just surprised by it, minus the fact that they slowed the set way down. <laughs> chaotic trans- people are actually using chaotic transformation? Oh, with enchantment creatures. Clever. And to go get a portal to Phyrexia or a Flesh Gorger, which is an artifact and a creature. This is funny. Cost six to pull off and go for the throats. The only real removal here. Everything else is just ramp. Ramp, ramp, and pray. <laughs> Rule did look pretty strong. Grixis artifact? What was this? I mean, neat. I don't really understand the artifact motif, minus the fact that you can sacrifice to the eight spells that let you. I don't know about all that. That doesn't seem very efficient. Yoda, Urtai, Helena, Shanna, Toulouse, Adeline, Jaren, Wena. Add two mana in any combination of colors. Spend those to cast creature spells or activate abilities of a creature or a creature card. Free cast creature spells five or greater. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on Eyes of Grace and untap it. Neat. Katilda Hajar. Very cool. Denik, Talia, Ashnod. Not a whole lot of changes from last set. Really just the three new cards and two of them are one ofs.
I always liked Invoke. What makes it Boros? Fable? <laughs> yeah. This is very similar to something I built a while back. I like the lay down arms. That kind of looks like the only new card though. Kind of goofy. Artifact aggro just looks insane. I mean Michiko's Yotai autonomous assembler and just dump it all onto a dragon engine. Three drop, three three double strike. Yeah, that lets you draw. Let's go, my officer, veteran, crazy, Arvin, sky strike officer, so strong. Um, Siege Veteran, yikes, this is crazy aggressive, turn three you're beating somebody up. What is artifact control, are we still? Not using a meld, okay. Lots of counter spell play coming back. Dies to removal is definitely a sentence. Not looking entirely all that fun, if we're being honest. Kind of feels locked down. This is looking more like pre Eldrain standard. Everyone's trying to kill you or trying to live forever. Everyone is now running mid range, anyways. Explorer, historic. We'll look at those another time. I like that. Still plenty of decks we could have gone through. I've looked at a few of them. Uh, we can grab the over the top real quick. Oops. Yeah, over the top portal to Phyrexia does seem very funny. Very, very funny. And of course, over the top being the only non permanent card in the deck, so. Odd to see careful cultivation coming back in such a big supply. I used it to build a channel deck at one point that was kind of fun, but I didn't expect it to come back. Like, I actually show up on lists. Okay. Quite a lot going on here. Lots and lots of mid range. Um, I'm just going over decks for this tournament tomorrow. Uh, here, let me, uh, let 
These these are kind of what I'm looking at right now for what I might run. Aggro and mid range seem to be just all over the goddamn place. But uh, let me scroll down a little bit. I I'm playing digital though. I'm not buying this in paper. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably buy the Tatianas, or Titanias, but eee. the rest of this deck, not so much. Actually, I I own most of the rest of this deck. <laughs> it's not all new cards. Like, I have a three stack of Slogurk. I definitely have at least two Shigeki. I have an Erg. I definitely have two Rudsteins because I think they're both alt art. Um, Infernal Grasp has been around. Curate I might not have seen before. I don't think this is a reprint. Uh, Go for the Throat's a reprint. I have Cut Downs. I have a Foil Tear Asunder. I have four Foil Covers or Devious Cover Ups. Uh, I definitely have multiple different arts of Urbog Repossession. Silver Scrutiny, I think I pulled one of. And Founding the Third Path, I definitely have four of it. It was an uncommon, and we bought like three boxes of that set. Mm hmm. The only thing is uh, Argoth and Titania. A rare and a mythic that I think I have two and three of respectively now in digital. But yeah, it looks pretty rampy, pretty controlly. I honestly just love running Shigeki anymore. With the Urbog repossession, the combo was just so grind heavy. Um, the other one though is this, and I love me a domain control deck. Like, as soon as Drag to the Bottom came out, I think I built four of these. <laughs> but Urza plus Might and Weak Stone. Uh, I don't know if I can. Pull up Big Urza for you. Um, oh, flip. Nope, it's just other images. God damn it. Why can't I d look at the other side of this? <laughs> anyway, when you flip him into the planeswalker, he's crazy. But until then, he just makes all my spells cheaper, along with Sten. And, uh, that means I can, like, drag to the bottom for two. Or Celestis for free. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to do some tweaking, but these are the two I think I'm trying to decide between now. Again, the meta is insanely aggressive looking because the set was slow, so everybody's trying to power damage out early before people stabilize, because once you stabilize, you can do a lot right now, but you got to get to five mana and on tap and not be dead. So, people are using the mediocre cards to make sure you're dead by then. Minus, uh, looks like Azorius Soldiers is actually kind of crazy. Mono Red Burn is back as well, but shaky. Ah. Uh, I think, yeah, you know, 
hopefully it gets as many kills, right? Are you seeing that? Oh, no, 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 50 bucks for all three. Why are these worth so much? I don't know, honestly. Brand new set, I guess. Um, I gotta delete a couple things. Went on a build of bit of a building spree last night. Just testing crap out. Import. Domain control, and this is salt eye. And I'm going to call this one No Goif because it's probably the first salt eye deck in a minute that I have built without Tarmogoyf, or whatever the new Goyf's name is. Uh, promise I know what I'm doing here. There we go. <coughs> All right. I'm just eating an absurd amount of Sour Patch Kids, so. <laughs> Don't mind me, that's why I haven't been talking. Uh, no I've been worries. literally stuffing my fucking face full of them. Alright, so how close or how far away? One Titania, two Argoth. This did not grab a sideboard, but we can definitely fix that. Uh, domain control. Also no sideboard. Looks like two mythics, a rare, three mythics, two rares, four rares. I think it'll actually tell me exactly if I hover at three and two. And rares, we need six and two. Sheesh, okay. Plenty of playable options. I'm gonna go ahead and favorite. Favorite, so I don't lose these. All right. Cool. I think I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream here, and uh, we'll come back with the rebuilds. <laughs>